Alrighty guys, hello, good morning, good Monday morning. Uh, this is Dave from Breaking Chart Alerts, guys. Hope everyone had a great Mother's Day weekend and are ready to start trading this week. Markets are looking pretty good here. We're hitting new highs. I wanted to go over a few things here. Number one, I'm glad we picked up shares of that ERJ uh, in Friday's afternoon pro trader session here. As you guys can see, we're getting another nice breakout here on Embraer Jets. I think we're going to continue to see this take off. It's just starting that breakout momentum. It just broke above that resistance right around $12 a share here. So we picked up 1,000 shares of Embraer on Friday in the afternoon pro trader session. And what we're going to be looking to do once we get up to that new resistance area, we're going to be looking to sell some covered calls and collect that rent check every month from selling those covered calls on Embraer. So we have 1,000 shares. Obviously, one contract is 100 uh, has control over 100 shares. So we'll be looking to sell 10 contracts every month to bring in that additional revenue, which I like to call that rent check uh, on those covered calls there. So that's looking pretty good on Embraer. You guys know we picked up a trade on COP, ConocoPhillips. And as you guys can see, that one's already up 1.56% in the pre-market hours here. We have a pretty decent sized trade on uh, ConocoPhillips. And if you guys remember, we picked up this trade looking at the uh, top upgrades, downgrades, initiations, price target changes for the day. And uh, we found that beautiful setup as it was upgraded to $85 a share. We ended up picking that up when it was at like 50, what, 54, 55? Something like that. So we got another nice climb on ConocoPhillips here. That's going to do really well. Uh, if you guys take a look here too, we could see Delta Airlines finally getting a candle above that 10. Right now, if we zoom in a little bit, uh, just like I've been talking about. You know, I've been talking to you guys about this for quite a while here. Here's Delta Airlines. This is a daily chart right here. As you can tell, here's the breakdown momentum cycle where we'd be buying puts, shorting shares. Yellow area is the no trade zone, that's consolidation. And then we have a new cycle forming here, a breakout momentum. And as you can see, getting up to that upper area of the band here, of the channel, pulling back down to the lower end, breaking out, and it's continuing to do the same. It's making higher lows as we continue to go here. So I love that chart set up on Delta, especially going into the summertime months here. Not sure if you guys watch NBC Nightly News or Lester Holt or any of those on TV there, but... Um, prices for air tickets are insane now. If you guys remember, I was flying up to New York over the pandemic for literally 30 bucks round trip. Uh, now they're back up to around $400 round trip. So I think we're going to continue to see the airlines take off here and continue to see momentum in the airline sector. So airlines are looking good. Delta's got its first candle above the 10. We'll see if it can hold above that for the day. And uh, you guys know we got a July Expo on Delta, June and July Expo. So we'll watch that continue to take off. Markets are opening in two minutes. Uh, that's Delta Airlines. Now let's take a look at CCL that was moving in the pre-market hours here. There we go. And again, another green candle here. Uh, I want to see a candle above 27.50. That's some major resistance here that I want to see us break through. If we could break through that 27.50 a share on Carnival Cruise Line, I'll be adding to that trade here as well. So that's another one that we have that's looking good. Now, if you guys remember, we also have a decent sized trade on Exxon Mobil. The energy sector is continuing to take off as transportation needs continue to drive uh, sales and demand higher. And we're seeing energy sector continue to rise here. So ExxonMobil break it above $63 a share. You guys know we got a nice trade on ExxonMobil. That's going to be up probably about 50% overall today uh, on the open here. Another beautiful chart on ExxonMobil. So once the bell opens here, I want to go over the top upgrades, downgrades, initiations, and price target changes for the day. Here are the analyst upgrades, as you guys can see right here. Let me put this on a bigger screen for you guys. So here we go. Here is the top upgrades and uh, and whatnot for the day here. So I like going through this PNC. I like looking where they do a market perform to outperform. That means they're you know they were expecting the stock to you know kind of go with the market here, but you know now they're saying it's going to outperform the market. Those are the best types of ratings I like to look at. Uh, those changes there, those nice upgrades from market perform to outperform, equal weight to overweight there, in line to outperform. You know, so these are the ones we got to take a look at. So we can take a look at ACC. I'm just going to write these down here on my notepad so I can take a look at the ones that I want to take a look at. Um, let's see here. 
PNC. PNC was a nice one. That was upgraded to, uh, what, 220? 220? ACC upgraded to $50. Here we go, guys. Market is open. Good luck today. Let's see what else we got here. We have CCOI. CCOI. 84 bucks. And then we have, that's about it. That's all I really care to look at here. MoneyGram. Let's take a look at MoneyGram, MGI. You guys remember during the pandemic when that was two bucks we were trading it. Should have held on to that for the long term there. So MoneyGram upgraded to 10 bucks there. Lyft, um, neutral to outperform. We'll take a look at Lyft to LYFT. That should be good news there for Uber as well. So upgraded to 56 bucks. We'll take a look at that. So there's the upgrades. Let's go take a look at those quick and see what's going on. First on ExxonMobil, um, ConocoPhillips. Let's take a look what we opened the account with today. As far as gains are going, another nice day here. ExxonMobil, take a look what we're up on ExxonMobil on opening bell here. Here is ExxonMobil trade. That trade's already up almost 40%. We got about a 39% gain. It's still climbing here, so let me just refresh that quick. We're probably up over 40% now. And yes, we are. We're up 45% now on ExxonMobil. I got a lot of sun this weekend. We were at all the theme parks. We ended up going to the Ritz-Carlton uh, for Mother's Day, so I don't know if that sun's just translating a lot more energy here, but... I definitely have some energy today. 45% gain on our Exxon Mobil up $1,839.72. And again, that's for the July 16th, 62.50 strike. And we're still climbing on Exxon Mobil. Let's continue to refresh that. Let's see what we're up now. Now we're up over 50%. What did I tell you guys before we were uh, before the markets open? 50% gain, right? We are now up over 50% on Exxon Mobil there. We're at 62.50. I really think Exxon Mobil could get up to that 70 bucks from now until that July Expo. But you guys know what I love to do, right? What do I like to do, guys? We're up $2,069.72 on that already. What do we like to do on a gain like that, which now we're up over 53% on as Exxon Mobil continues to climb here? What do we like to do, guys? 51.32%, $2,119. And let's see. Adrian, those guys, they're all saying we like to lock in profits. And you guys are correct. Lock in profit, take profit. Good job, guys. So, you know what? Let's see if we can take a little profit here. Let's see. We're still climbing, though, on ExxonMobil. We're now up 52% on that trade already. I didn't even get to our ConocoPhillips trade yet. I'm still looking at ExxonMobil here, but we're up $3,000 overall for the day today. Here's ExxonMobil up 52.53%. Still continuing to break higher here as energy uh, continues to climb. And uh, we're now up over 53% on ExxonMobil. All right, so guys, what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to lock in that trade. I'm going to close it out here. We got those 20 contracts. Let's see. I put an order for 3.25. Let's see that executed, guys. We just closed out our Exxon Mobil trade, and here it is right here. We just closed it out. We are out of that trade at three dollars and twenty-five cents. I'm gonna share that with you guys in the trade room.
Let's see, what were we in that trade at? You guys remember? Here we go, 2.06. So 3.25, divide that by 2.06. That was a 58% gain. That was a 58% gain. Alrighty, so there's that trade there we just closed out. That was a beautiful trade there, quick trade. We just locked in over $2,000 on that. Nice way to start a Monday morning. Now let's take a look at what else we are doing here. ConocoPhillips, take a look at our ConocoPhillips trade, guys. COP. We are up 1500 bucks on that today. Here we go, we're up 42% on our ConocoPhillips trade. We're up $2,729.79 on COP. So I want to look at COP in the background here, see what that's doing. COP. We're still climbing on COP. I mean, that's still taking off there. Look at those gains continuing to rise there as ConocoPhillips continues to break out. COP now up over 45% here. We were just up what? 41.79%. Well, take a look at what we're up now on it, guys. COP. 45.8% gain. We're up $3,000 on our COP trade already. And guess what? That's for the August 20th expiration. So plenty of time on that. Still going to continue to let that run there. She's still taking off, still climbing. 59.21 a share. And we are now up 48% on ConocoPhillips, guys. 48% on COP. Up $3,100 for the overall trade there. 47.53%. You guys could see in the background, it's still taking off here. So, what we talk about with breakout momentum uh, trades, you know, we're looking for that quick momentum. Where else are you going to make a 50% gain on a pretty solid trade here? We're now up 49% on COP. We're up $3,200, just about $3,179.79, $4,867. Uh, last traded at $652. I think that one's going to continue to climb there, but you guys know what we like to do, right? Lock in some profits. She's going for 640 by 660. Alrighty, guys, I just closed out of our ConocoPhillips trade. We are out of that here as well. We locked in a nice trade, nice gain on COP. So here's our COP. We just closed that out, 645. Nice gain on that as well. Okay, we closed that out at 6.45. Let's see, what were we in at? We were in at 4.35. So 6.45, divide that by 4.35. 6.45, divide that by 4.35. We closed that out for a 48% gain. Forty-eight point three percent gain.
Nicely done there, guys. Nicely done. <clears throat> now we're going to take a look, see what else is moving here. Let me just go back here and see what we closed out here for the day so we could post that. Let's see how we started off our Monday morning here. What is today's date? The 10th, right? So here's what we ended up doing so far today, guys. Nice way to start a Monday morning. There's what we did so far here today, guys. We closed out of two trades, ConocoPhillips, ExxonMobil. <clears throat> we locked in a profit today so far of Nice way to start a Monday, guys. How many of you guys locked in those two trades here? Got a nice little pullback from the highs there. That's great news there. Lock those in just about at the highs. Adrian said he locked in ExxonMobil. He didn't get uh, ConocoPhillips. Wish he got into that one, too. That was a really good one. It was pretty cheap, too. I'm going to be getting into another ConocoPhillips trade once we see a little bit of a retracement there on that. Let's see, Petrobras at 925. I'm just looking at the um, watch list up above here. If you guys take a look at it up above, Z says he had a home run on COP ConocoPhillips. Nice trade there, Z. <clears throat> guys, and I'm just letting you know, our trade challenge is coming up next week. Next week, our new trade challenge starts. Our 2021 trade challenge. I'm really looking forward to that because I'm really going to go into much more detail of, of teaching and, and going into that every day with you guys on the trade challenge account. Seventeenth there. STMP Gold. If you could let me know your name again. James. There we go. It was a long weekend. Let's see here. I'm looking at the watch list up above here. So if you guys want to take a look here, I'll share the top screen here with you guys. So you guys could take a look at what we're doing here. Another nice move. Let's go start from the top here. See what's moving. Amazon down 44 points. Bank of America having a nice move up 1.23%. Let's take a look. Most active stocks. Let's change that to options here. Here's the top uh, movers list on options. Largest percent option gainers for the day here. As you guys could see, I'll push this out a little bit more here so you can see the actual trades. Stocks, largest percent losers. Let's see largest percent gainers since the market's higher here today. Uh, that's on the American Stock Exchange. Let's put on there NASDAQ. We 
original health. All right, so there's the top movers for the day here. The market movers list, uh, largest percent gainers of the NASDAQ right here in the top. Bottom one here is the market movers list for options. It's the largest percent option gainers for the day. I like looking at these because if, if you're in real breakout in some of these, you can scalp some of these trades for some really quick gains, which I love to do. So you guys could take a look here as this continues. What a pullback on COP, guys. We literally sold right at the top there on our COP. We literally sold at 9.40 a.m. And she continued to pull back here, which is a beautiful trade there. She pulled back about a dollar from those highs, a little over a dollar. That's why I like taking profits, because we took profits. If this pulls back another, you know, another dollar or two, I could definitely jump back in, use partial profits of that trade, and um, and go to the next trade set up there. So here's Conoco Phillips. We sold literally at 9:40 a.m. right here. Right here is where we sold. We sold right there and she just continued to retrace there since we sold. So nice setup there, nice locking in the gains on ConocoPhillips. You know, there's you can't go broke taking a profit, guys. I love taking those profits, locking in those profits. And then when you see the next opportunity on ConocoPhillips, that's when we could utilize those profits or half of those profits to fuel that next trade on ConocoPhillips or something in the same sector or industry there. Efren's back in the trade room with us this morning. Good morning, Efren. Paula says CLF, Cleveland Cliffs. Let's take a look at Cleveland Cliffs there. CLF. Cleveland Cliffs, another nice breakout on CLF. That one had a nice upgrade. Paul is still in that one. I think it was upgraded to, what, $24 or $26 a share? It's a nice one there. Had a big run from, you know, seven, 17 bucks all the way up to almost $23. I'll hold off on that one a little bit. A good taste in my mouth on CLF, but Pollard's doing a great job, job trading that. She's been in that since it's like uh, five to seven bucks. So nice job on that, Paula. Still taking off there on CLF new highs. Adrian said he's waiting for Netflix to rebound. I'm not in a Netflix trade, but let's take a look. Yeah, that one's just still pretty flat there, Adrian. I wouldn't go anywhere near Netflix. Nowhere near it. I think their uh, subscriber growth is going to drop a bit after the pandemic here. Let's see. Muhammad said he did locked cop. Nice job. Nice job, Muhammad. On the chat here, he said on Zoom, he said he locked in cop. Nicely done there, buddy. Let's see here, DAL, Bank of America, PNC Bank. Let's go over our, our ones that we wanted to take a look in now that we settled down here, locked in our profits. That's what is really important here, guys, is number one, once you lock in those profits, now what we could do is go back to our upgrades, downgrades, initiations, price target changes. We could go through that list that we made this morning. We have what, one, two, three, four. We have five stocks here that we found off of our upgrade list. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at these five stocks, analyze them with our trade plan, and see what, you know, and then we also have the price target changes here as well. So we'll take a look at the chart, see what cycle they're in with our trade plan, and then see those uh, target upgrades there and see if we can make a trade on a new stock here. This is how we ended up finding our ConocoPhillips. 
And if you're patient and disciplined, you can find some really nice trade setups just by looking at those upgrades, downgrades, initiations, and price target changes. So let's dive in now to start taking a look at these for the day. It's Monday, so you know we're not gonna you know actively be trading on a Monday here until we see what the market's gonna do. Market Dow is up 197 points. Nasdaq pulled down about 165 points so far today. So that tells you one thing. Nasdaq, I don't want to be looking at tech stock just yet. They're starting to pull back. The Dow, the industrials are still climbing, making new highs. And uh, that's what we want to focus in on. So let's dive in, take a look at this watch list here and see if we can find any new setups. Alrighty, so let's take a look at ACC. ACC was upgraded to 50 bucks a share. She's at 46.17. She pulled back from the highs there. She had a tight consolidation here from 45 up to about 46. So nothing there I want to do with ACC yet. Now PNC, that was another one that was upgraded. This one was upgraded to $220 a share. That had a really nice break out there. Big gains on PNC. So what I want to do here is take a look at PNC. It's still pulling back. It's coming down from the highs today, so it's not the right time. It's not the right opportunity yet to jump in PNC. If we look at it today, one minute chart, you'll see she's continuing lower here for the day. She had that big pop on that upgrade. She's in breakdown momentum now. We have that 10 crossing below that blue 20-day simple moving average. She's holding below that 10. You know, if we could see a breakout start to happen here, we still have the MACD that crossed below. So that's showing continued signs of a little pullback here. Not a pullback, but a little retracement from the highs for the day here. So, you know, obviously when we're making a trade, we don't want to get into a trade when it's in that breakdown momentum cycle or the breakdown momentum phase. We want to wait for it to get that, uh, you know, little pop there and start that breakout momentum. So I'm holding off on PNC, but that's one we should have on our lot watch list. CCOI. All right, this is one that had an upgrade. It was upgraded to 84 bucks a share. Six month daily chart here. Another one that's pulling back from the highs. Dow is now up 225 points. Just broke 200 bucks for the day. So that's what I want to be focusing in on is, um, you know, some of these stocks here. But we're pulling back a little bit on some of these for the day here. So not the right time just yet. MGI, MoneyGram. That was one we were trading during the pandemic. How many of you guys remember trading uh, MoneyGram back during the pandemic here of 2020 when it, she was down to about a dollar, two bucks a share? I still remember picking up those two strike calls for a year out expo. Man, oh man, do I wish I kept those because she went from a dollar twenty all the way up to almost twelve bucks a share. That's a tenfold in the underlying stock with equities. That would have been over, or I'm sorry, with options, derivatives, that would have been over a thousand percent return easily on that trade there. Well over, I mean, that might have been closer to a ten thousand percent return. You know, and we could actually take a look at that as well if we do uh, some simple back testing uh, looking at the option chain there. But if you guys remember, we were actively trading MoneyGram during that pandemic there, picking up those two strikes, those 250 strike calls. I remember that like it was yesterday. So MoneyGram just had an upgrade. It was upgraded to $10 a share. The stock's at 834 now. So still plenty of room for MoneyGram to continue higher here. We'll keep an eye on MoneyGram. It's up 3.86% for the day. Um, today, it's coming down to that 50-day simple moving average. It seems like it's holding support at 825 a share. So we'll keep an eye on MoneyGram. Next one that had the big upgrade was Lyft, L-Y-F-T. Lyft was upgraded to 56 bucks a share. Stock's at 49.74 now. It had a big pop this morning. It started to retrace as most of the stocks that we're looking at uh, are doing here. So that's one that you want to look at going forward here. Keep on your watch list and keep an eye out for Lyft. Let's take a look at Uber, see what Uber's doing here as well. Uber pulling back there about 1.72% and uh, trading with Lyft. We were talking about the ascending triangle here. Remember, we were talking about a break above or a break below is going to give you that signal of what that stock's going to do. Started breaking below here, and it's continuing to retrace here on that ascending triangle on Uber. Let's go back up here. Facebook right back down to 309.22. That's starting to pull back a bit. Caterpillar. Remember, we talked about sector rotation and the industrials. Uh, during certain uh, business cycles of of the economy here. So obviously Caterpillar is going to be a good one to continue to ride higher here. I'm thinking about doing a larger Caterpillar trade next, 
probably might do about 10 to 15,000 initially on Caterpillar and look to trade that one higher, probably up to about 250 to 260 a share. Now, if I wanted to hold that for the rest of the year, especially with Biden's infrastructure plan, spending $6 trillion, what do you think they're gonna need to uh, do all this infrastructure? They're gonna have to be buying equipment, Caterpillar, they're gonna have to be using uh, you know, all these uh, petroleum products. So that's why we're seeing a big rise in certain sectors here. You know, so Caterpillar is going to be another easy one to continue to run higher. I love that setup there, and I really like uh, Caterpillar. We'll be looking to make a Caterpillar trade next. Muhammad says, thank you for helping us make some money, Dave. Not a problem, Muhammad. Glad to have you with us, and uh, look forward to having another good week. Let's see, Jack Dottie says Tesla's breaking down. We'll take a look at Tesla here. Tesla breaking lower here. And, um, you know, this is a six month daily chart. You got some support right around 600 bucks there. Breakdown momentum and support at 600. If she holds that 600, you might want to take a look at that. But honestly, it, uh, the electric car market's getting so competitive right now. I'm not really interested in those. JP Morgan continuing to take off there. Remember the trade uh, we made on JP Morgan. Where did it hit, guys? There was our target, 160 to 165. She's at 163.10 now. Do you guys remember that JP Morgan 150 call? She's just starting that breakout momentum. I think we're going to see JP Morgan go much higher here. So I want to take a look here. I'm going to go up to the tools, uh, the research, and we're going to go to analyst research and reports here. And we're going to take a look at this. So let's take a look here. JPM. Okay, so here is the chart for JP Morgan Chase, right? So this is what analysts, this is the analyst research here. So what we're looking for is what are they saying? They're saying the high target of 195, the low target of 135, average price target about 168. Now remember, PNC just got upgraded to what? $220 a share, right? So the financial sector, as you guys can see, they're continuing to get upgraded and they're continuing to see higher price targets. Why? Because the economy is continuing to improve. As interest rates rise over the coming months or years, you're gonna see the you're gonna see the financial sector, most specifically the banks, uh, their margins are gonna start going up. Their profit margins are gonna increase as they charge higher rates for loans. So, you know, you're starting to see this cycle forming right now. You know, uh, banks are starting to get the upgrades, the economy is improving a bit, you know, so Keep an eye on the financials. This is going to be one that we definitely want to take a look at. I'm going to write that down on my notebook right here. Um, JPM. I'm going to be looking for something maybe next year's expo. And I'll probably be targeting about $200 a share for next year's expo. I like JP Morgan. That one's definitely going to be a nice one for us there. Um, I'm going to go down here. All right, this guy right here. Uh, he gave a sell rating on it. You know, he doesn't even have any success rates or anything to show yet for J.P. Morgan. He's probably a new kid on the block, so I'm not even going to pay attention to him. Mike Mayo, you know, Mayo here, 195 target. John Haggerty, $150 price target. He's got a, uh, you know, 100% rate. Well, of course, if you give a $150 price target and the stock's already above it, you know, that makes you a genius, doesn't it? <laughs> Some of these guys, I just don't understand how they could do upgrades like that when the stock's already above. Anyway, uh, Ken, 177 price target. You know, so you see the price targets here pretty good recently. I want to look at the most recent price target changes here. So we have anywhere from 150, 175 to 195 there. I like that on JP Morgan. So I'm going to be looking for a trade probably either this afternoon or tomorrow on JP Morgan. NASDAQ still continuing to pull back. NASDAQ's down about 184 points right now. SLB, Slumber Day, and NLB announced collaborations to accelerate adoption of automated drilling solutions. <clears throat> That's Sandy you know, Bravo, SLB.
Board of Appointment and Finance Index, 102.65, revised from 102.44. That's for April. That's uh, for February revised. The April uh, takes 105.44 on top of 40. There's what we did so far here today, guys. You should have gotten these app alerts uh, right on your phone there. You should have gotten all these um, breaking chart alerts. If you guys don't have our app, make sure you guys go download it now. Breaking chart alerts. It's on your Apple App Store, your Google Play Store. Check it out there. Uh, we closed out. First off, we sent out our live trading morning session around 9.15. Exxon Mobile calls. We closed out for a 58% gain. ConocoPhillips, a 48% gain. Nice gains on, on those trades right there. Exxon Mobile pulled back from those highs where we sold at this morning. So that was a really nice trade set up there that we did. JP Morgan starting to climb a little bit there.
market pulling back a little bit. Now Dow's now only up about 215, and that's why we are just sitting here being disciplined, being patient, waiting for that next setup. Just locked in about $5,500 in profits for the morning, which is a great start to Monday morning here. Now let's just wait and look for that next setup here. Exxon Mobil starting to climb again. Here are the other trades that we just made. Here's what they're doing today. Embraer, FedEx, and GE. Here's those other three trades that we have open here. Embraer, FedEx, GE that we just opened last week. Our FedEx trades up about 8%, up 469 bucks on that basically. Our Embraer, we have 1,000 shares of that. We're up about $255. We just picked that up on Friday. We got over a 2% gain on that. And our general electric shares or contracts here, up $250 today, $339.72 overall for an overall net return so far of 5.56%. And notice the expiration dates for these. That's really important, guys. Picking the correct expiration dates and strike prices is extremely important because if you pick up a, a call and and I pick up a call spread, you know, or vice versa. One could be a losing trade, one could be a winning trade. So it's really important to understand why you're getting the expirations and the strikes that you're getting. JP Morgan still starting to take off again here. I'm thinking about making a trade right now on JP Morgan going out a little bit further. I think that's going to be a nice setup for us. Let's make a small trade here on JP Morgan. All right, new trade is coming here, guys. Do I want to make this trade now? I think we do. All right, JP Morgan, let's take a look at the expos that we want to look at here. JPM, let's look at that. Let's look at that August expo to start with. It's going for about this 160 is going for about 982 165 going for about 728 June 17 2022 I like that setup there I think we're gonna pick that up 1360 by 1540 though that's a big difference there between the bid and the ask so if you do this trade you're definitely gonna have to be looking to put in a limit order here you got plenty of it open interest, some volume here. So I'm gonna be looking at this one right here. I think that's plenty of time for us. You know, if you're looking for a shorter term trade, I would go with the August 2021. But like I said, this one here, we have a strategy for that longer term as the economy improves. And also as the rates start to climb here, the financial sector are going to see higher profit margins on those loans they're heading out, giving out. So let's see, June. Biden is uh, doing, what did he say? Unemployment uh, insurance benefits there. I guess he's gonna extend them. Let's see here, 165 is going for about 1450. Let's take a look at the Delta on these first off. We'll go down to columns here. We will put on our delta. We'll put on our theta. I hate how it always takes that off. I wish it would just leave it on here. All right, so those 165s got a delta of about 0.518, which is great. The 160s, 0.567. 
Um, I'm going to pick this up here. June 17, 2022. Okay. Limit order. We'll go in for about... Last traded at 1490, theoretically 14.5. We'll try 14.60. I'll look to get five contracts of that right now. Five contracts, that's about a $7,300 trade. Let's see if we can get an execution here on those. That's an open order, still not ex executed at 1460. I'll bump it up a tad there to 14. Point, uh, let's see, theoretically now it's going for 15 bucks. You guys are, are pushing it higher there for me. Let's see, 14.90. See if we can get in there for 14.9. She's pulling back a little bit. I might be able to get a better price point here. That's okay. I'll get it for 14.9 if she fills. That's an open order at 14.90. Still no execution at 14.90. That comes through, and I'll let you guys know as soon as that fills. She's still open at 14.9, even with that pullback there. Okay, let's see here. I'll try it at 15 bucks here. See if we could get a fill at 15. Still open, it's still not filling at 15 bucks. Saying now it's at 15.18. You see how quick that's taken off there with that volume coming in. Let's see if she filled yet at 15. Still no fill yet at 15 bucks. Still an open order. Amazon's starting to break out here off those lows, guys. It just having that 1020 cross on a today one minute chart. I already had the MACD cross. Green bars above the zero line on the histogram of the moving average convergence divergence. It's looking good there. JP Morgan still in open order at $15 for the June 17th, 2022, 165 strike call. How many of you guys got burnt on Dogecoin? I sold that right before Saturday Night Live. I was actually at a theme park with my daughter. I saw that spiking. I locked in profits. I made a post on it on my personal Facebook page there. I said, guys, there's two types of strategies that you guys could be following. Either A, you know how they say, buy the rumor, sell the news. Well, the rumor was Elon Musk going on Saturday Night Live, and that caused that Dogecoin to have a nice climb there. So I ended up locking in profits right before they went on, on Saturday Night Live, which was amazing. I locked in a nice 140% gain on my Dogecoin there that I have in Sophia's account on Robinhood. And then, you know, she had a big pullback. So I said the second strategy, and then I said this f a few days ago. I said the second strategy is buy the dip mentality and look for that longer term setup on Dogecoin because cryptocurrency is still in its infancy, okay? There's big SPACs coming out now that are, are investing into these cryptocurrencies. There's hedge funds that are just, you know, that are just on crypto, that are just trading cryptocurrency. All right, guys, our JP Morgan got filled at $15 a contract. All right, so let's go over here now and look at the um,
right, so that target was hit. Now what I want to look for here is a further breakout here. Let's see. All right, so we already hit our target on our first JP Morgan trade. So now let's take a look and analyze this for the next one here. Those of you on YouTube, it's about 1030. So I'm going to end the live session for YouTube here. If you guys want to come join us, you guys could go to BreakingChartAlerts.com. Come join us and, um, and get signed up. Our new trade challenge is starting soon here. It's starting next week. So make sure you guys go to membership pricing plans. Join now, log in, membership pricing plans. And if you guys want to save 15%, you guys could use promo code RALLY for the Elite Pro Trader and save money on that if you plan on staying with us for the year. Uh, that's going to save you quite a bit of money compared to going with those monthly memberships. Or if you don't have the budget for that, you guys could start off with the Trader or Pro Trader. Trader gives you morning session uh, and the app alert and the email Pro Trader will give you um, morning, afternoon session, and the Elite Pro Trader, you're going to get everything previously along with text alerts, app alerts, uh, trade analysis in the live session in the afternoon. Um, you're going to get two private classes with us as well as the um, beginner, intermediate, and advanced classes that we have on our education tab right up here if you go to options trading classes. And I just uploaded a couple of new classes here for you guys to check out too if you guys uh, haven't checked that out in a bit. And then obviously once you're our member, you could go here to trade alerts and you guys could check out our trade alerts and see what we've been doing here. Analyze any trade, Conoco Phillips, and, uh, and whatnot here. So nice trade there and great setups there on those trades. We didn't put the closing uh, percentage gains on here. So I'll get that updated here. We have to say trade closed for X percent gain or loss on those, but getting there. So come join us, guys, and uh, we will see you guys in the afternoon if you guys come join us. Take care, YouTube, and have a great day. Great start to the week here. Alrighty, take care guys, and I hope to see you guys live with us in the afternoon. Just go to breakingchartalerts.com, and we'll see you in the live trade room. Take care guys.